we now have our initial view of the system. This is unstructured, it's a bit of a mess, it's very cluttered, very difficult to read. And so now what we want to do is to begin the levelling process so that we can present the design in a much more user-friendly fashion. We will need to look at these processes to see if there are any that are logically grouped together. Now, knowing what was coming, I've already done that a little bit in the way that I've laid it out. But it's quite feasible, if you haven't done it in perfect uh, arrangement, which of course nobody does, you will be able to move these around and get them grouped together. And then you can do something like this. This is only a visual aid now. It's not part of the process. But what you can do is something like this. Draw a line that intersects through the inflows and outflows of the processes that are logically grouped. And this then allows you to identify a group of logically related processes. We can do it again with these that seem to be related. And also with these. And these. So now we have four groups. These are quite obviously the manager processes. These are the administrator processes. Those are the operator processes, and these are the till processes. Let's consider now whether we need to have a separate group for operator processes and till processes. To do that, we'll consider what the context diagram should look like. Why is the operator not considered part of the context diagram? Well, this illustration shows why. Here we have the system, and the boundary of the system is marked here, around this process. And therefore, the only thing that we're interested in are the inputs and the outputs for that system. And any external entity that either sends the inputs or receives the outputs. And because the operator is interacting with the system via the till, in other words, the operator is not directly interacting with the system. We do not need to show this on the context diagram. And so we would delete it. And so for this reason, the two groups, one for the operator, one for the till, will actually be linked in our example as one logical grouping. So now that we've got our groups, we can consider how to level them. It's really quite straightforward. Each of the groups will be drawn as a separate DFD. These will be low-level, bottom-level data flow diagrams. And each group will be represented on the next level up as a single process. So, for example, this group here that is for the manager processes can be drawn in this way. We can draw a manager subsystem, which is this DFD with those three processes. The Inputs, date and sales summary for summarized sales for day, appear in exactly the same way. And the data stores that are represented here, as current user, till log, staff, will appear in the appropriate places on this diagram. Then if we look at the next level up, which in our case is level zero, we can see the manager subsystem represented as a single process with the three data stores and their inputs and outputs exactly the same. Till log details, till ID and staff details, staff details, exactly the same as here. The observant among you will have noticed that there are only one input and one output. And that's because what we've done is group all those inputs as one data flow called manager input and the one data flow manager output it will represent all three of the output flows. This is a legitimate way of doing things, and we'll talk in another lecture about how the, that decision 
can be recorded in the documentation. We can do the same process for the administrator processes. This time in the administrator subsystem, here we have the five processes with the data stores. And on level zero, the administrator subsystem is represented as a single process. So we're now at one higher level of abstraction where the subsystem is represented as a single process. Again, inputs and outputs have been uh, grouped and the interaction with the data stores has been preserved. And then for the till subsystem, those four processes there, again, are represented here, one, two, three, four of them, with the higher level abstraction being represented as a single process on the next level up. Now, once we've got that, we could do the following. Group it again. And so now what we've got is one group of several subsystems. And if we take that to the next level up, again preserving the inputs and the outputs, we're actually, because there is now only one group, at the context diagram. Here is the group with one process that represents the entire system. And all the inputs and outputs have been preserved, which means we're now at the context diagram and all we have to do is to put on the external entities. And so we get from a bottom level sketch of all the processes that we've identified. And by the leveling process, we have ended up with the context diagram. And although we've developed this bottom up, it can now be presented to the reader as a top down diagram. We have the context diagram. That process, if we look at level zero, is represented here. And each of the subsystems will have their own lower level detail as data flow diagrams. And so it's a very simple operation to get from bottom level processes to a leveled data flow model. The only thing that remains is to write the pseudocode for the bottom level DFDs. There will of course be other details that we have to document, but these will be considered at a later time.